Hi everyone, welcome to our discussion in science, technology, and society. In this video, I will be discussing about the topic science, technology, and nation building. So in this slide, we have uh, the brief historical background of science and technology in the Philippines. So the history of science and technology in the Philippines started way back before the country gained its independence from the American colonizers. So meaning, Science and technology was already present uh, in the country um, even before uh, the Americans colonized us. That was during the Spanish and the pre-Spanish era or period. Now, science and technology or science in the Philippines during the pre-Spanish period. So uh, science is embedded in the way of life of the people, meaning in um, their day-to-day -day living, science is evident or science can be seen, observed, and applied. So here we have scientific knowledge is observed in the way they plant their crops that provide them food, in taking care of animals to help them in their daily tasks and for food production. Meaning in the field of agriculture, science can be seen or was applied during the pre-Spanish period. So uh, the Filipinos had a way or a system in planting their crops, in taking care of their animals and producing food mainly for survival so that they will have uh, something to eat in their day-to-day -day living. Science is also observed in the way they interpret the movements of the heavenly bodies to predict seasons and climates and in organizing days into months and years. So before, um, during the pre-Spanish period, um, technology was not that advanced yet. So they had a certain way so that uh, they can interpret um, seasons and climates as to when it will be a rainy season, when it will be a dry season. And they also had a way in organizing days and months into months and years, uh, which we call now as the calendar. Now, in preparing the soil for agriculture, so preparing the soil for agricultural purposes and like any other ancient cultures, uh, science was also uh, applied or used. And they also discovered the uh, medicinal uses of plants. So before, um, there were um, not a lot of medicines yet because that was the pre-Spanish period. So they made use of plants that they can see uh, around in the environment, in nature, and they tried to check, they tried to investigate if those plants can be used for medicinal purposes. Now we have uh, technology in the Philippines during the pre-Spanish period. So earlier that was science, now we have uh, technology. So technology was used by people in building houses, irrigations, and in developing tools that they can use in everyday life. So it is said that technology helps or makes our lives easier and faster. So even before, um, even if that was years ago, they had certain technology that they can use um, in doing such uh, work like building houses, irrigations, and using different tools. Uh, they developed tools for planting, hunting, cooking, and fishing 
for fighting their enemies during war or tribal conflicts, and for transportation both on land and on waterways. So uh, before, uh, they made use of the things that they see in nature, like stone. They will sharpen the stone so that uh, it can be used as a knife. So that can be used for cooking, for fishing, and even for fighting their enemies. And for transportation, um, they created uh, modes of transportation, both uh, on land and on waterways. Now, on land, uh, they made the wheel attached to a certain, um, like, vehicle so that uh, they will be able to travel. And also on waterways, they uh, build boats and uh, ships so that they can travel on water. They develop technologies in creating musical instruments. So as we all know, uh, Filipinos are fond of singing, fond of dancing as a way of leisure in order to enjoy. So they also create technologies so that uh, they can create musical instruments. Uh, next is the different archaeological artifacts discovered in different parts of the country also prove the, that the Metal Age also had a significant influence in the lives of early Filipinos. So the Metal Age, that was the time uh, they created um, tools, they created materials uh, made of metal that they can use or people can use in day-to-day -day living. The sophisticated designs of gold and silver jewelry, ceramics, and metal tools proved that their technological ideas helped in the development of different tools. So thanks to our ancestors or the people in the past, because, uh, because of them, um, if they were not able to develop those tools, we will not have those tools that we have today. So uh, they made that before and as time went or passed by, um, we just had to improve those certain tools and materials so that I will be able to use it for our convenience. During the Spanish period, so the Spaniards brought with them their own culture and practice also. Uh, the Spaniards were here in the Philippines for around uh, 333 years, if I'm not mistaken, so around 300 years. So um, we can say that our culture is somehow um, a mix of the different cultures of those uh, colonizers like the Americans, the Spanish, even the Japanese, uh, even if they were uh, here in the Philippines for a short period of time. But then again, uh, they were able to influence our culture. Uh, the Spaniards or the Spanish established a school for boys and girls and introduced the concept of subjects and disciplines. So um, during those time, a formal system of education was introduced. So uh, boys and girls went to school. Uh, Spanish people um, were the ones teaching different subjects and different disciplines. It was the beginning of formal science and technology in the country, known now as School of Science and Technology. So the subject, science and technology, that we have now uh, was introduced uh, during the Spanish period. Uh, learning of science in school focuses on understanding different concepts related to human body, plants, animals, and heavenly bodies. So as you will know, this is the scope of science and technology. Um, that is being taught in schools um, starting from elementary up to junior high, senior high, and college. So these topics are still being taught in schools. Technology focuses on using and developing house tools used in everyday life because uh, just like what I said earlier, uh, technology aids or helps people so that our life will become easier and faster so that uh, these tools are being developed 
so that uh, they can aid and help us. Life slowly became more modernized, adapting some Western technology and their ways of life. So when science uh, was formalized and introduced and uh, technology uh, started to develop, so the lives of the people uh, started to become modernized. And again, uh, it became easier and faster because of science and technology. During the American period, uh, they established the public education system. Public education meaning education for all, meaning uh, everyone, every um, kid or every child will be able to go to school and study. Uh, this, the Americans improved the engineering works and health conditions of the people. So they developed uh, roads, bridges, and different buildings, and also health conditions of the people by uh, creating or building hospitals. Uh, the Americans established a modern research university, the University of the Philippines. I know uh, we are all familiar with UP. So UP is considered as the modern research university. I don't know if you've heard the news, but during the uh, onset of the pandemic of uh, COVID-19, uh, the University of the Philippines uh, research uh, were able to develop the uh, rapid test kit uh, so that um, you will be able to identify or they will be able to identify if that certain person is positive of the COVID virus or not. Um, the Americans created more public hospitals so that they can help in uh, the health care of the people. Mineral resources of the country were also explored and exploited. Transportation and communication systems were also improved. So during the American period, uh, the mineral resources of the country uh, were explored and exploited. That was when uh, mining uh, began and transportation and communication systems were improved. So um, telephones uh, were introduced so that people can communicate better and faster. Americans did everything to Americanize the Philippines. So um, again, just like what I've said earlier, um, our culture has been or is a mix of the cultures of those colonizers. So aside from the Spanish or the Spaniards, the Americans also has a share um, of our culture. So they were able to influence us greatly. They reorganized the learning of science and introduced it in public and private schools. So science was taught to everyone, to every student, even if you are studying either in a private or a public school. So the influences in the development of science and technology in the Philippines. So uh, science and technology developed through uh, internal and external influences. So uh, internal meaning um, it influenced us in terms of our survival. So in uh, gathering or getting food for consumption in our culture, uh, also in economic activities. So economic activities meaning in utilizing our natural resources. Now for external influences, uh, we have the foreign colonizers, the Americans and the Spanish trade with foreign international. That's why we have um, the import and the export. So we export products to other countries. We also import, so we buy products also from them. Uh, we have economic demands and also activities. So that those were uh, the influences in the development of science and technology.
Next, we have uh, government policies on science and technology. The Philippine government introduced and implemented several programs, projects, and policies to boost the area of science and technology. The goal is to prepare the whole country and its people to meet the demands of a technologically driven world and capacitate the people to live in a world driven by science. So that is why we have the uh, DOSP or the Department of Science and Technology. They are in charge of the programs, projects, and different policies related to science and technology in the Philippines. So the NCRP or the Nat National Research Council of the Philippines clustered these policies into four. So we have four policies for science and technology. The first one is social sciences, humanities, education, internal policies, and governance. So um, under that cluster, we have integrating ASEAN awareness in basic education without adding to the curriculum. So as we all know, we are, uh, even if we have sovereignty, we are a sovereign nation, we are a part of the larger group what we call as the ASEAN or the Association of South Southeast Asian Nations wherein the Philippines is part or a member of. So I think during your elementary days or when you were still in elementary, uh, this concept was introduced to you. Uh, emphasizing teaching in the mother tongue, which began uh, when K-12 was implemented. So uh students in kinder grades one two and three i think they have a uh, mother tongue subjects so that um, we'll be able to appreciate and uh, have more knowledge of our mother tongue or the language that um we were introduced to when we were still uh, children Developing school infrastructure and providing for ICT broadband. So since science and technology is very important, so that's why it is being integrated into schools. Uh, last one is local food security. So we have uh, certain departments that uh, checks uh, the food that is, be that is being marketed or produced for uh, the safety of the people. Second cluster is physics, engineering, and industrial research, earth and space sciences, and mathematics. So emphasizing degrees, licenses, and employment opportunities. So uh, the PRC, or the uh, Professional Regulation Commission, um, they are in charge of... Um, administering exams so that um, it will be able, uh, they will be able to determine um, those professionals who are ready to venture in the professional world. Uh, employment opportunities, we have the DOLE or the Department of Labor and Employment. Now for degrees, um, we have the CHED, the Commission on Higher education so uh university state colleges universities and even uh private colleges and universities um uh hand in hand work with shed in order to um, provide degrees to the students outright grants for peer uh, monitoring so we have different scholarships for those who are studying a uh, review of RA 9184. Um, based on my reading, um, this is a law in order to um, for the government to uh, provide transparency. Meaning um, the government should tell or make the people aware of the different programs 
um, that our taxes, where our taxes are going to. Um, next is we have harnessing science and technology as an independent mover of development. Because um, since, or because of science and technology, um, that will be able to help us to um, develop further. Uh, cluster three, we have medical, chemical, and pharmaceutical sciences. So this cluster ensures compliance of drug manufacturing firms with SEN harmonized standards by full implementation of the Food and Drug Administration. So, of course, um, this cluster should make sure that the uh, medicine and the drugs being produced are safe for uh, the people. Creating an education council dedicated to standardization of pharmaceutical services and care. And we have empowering food and drug agencies to conduct evidence-based research as pool of information. And lastly, allocating 2% of GDP to research because um, research is very important. Through research, we will be able to discover new advances in science and technology, which will be helpful in the end for the people. The fourth cluster is uh, biological sciences, agriculture, and forestry. So under this cluster, uh, they protect and conserve biodiversity by full implementation of existing laws. So uh, they protect uh, the waters, uh, the forests, because if we will not protect our natural environment, in the end, uh, the negative effects will come back to us. Use of biosafety and standard model by ASEAN countries. Uh, promoting indigenous knowledge system and indigenous people's convert, uh, conservation. So uh, we need to promote uh, the native uh, culture, the native Filipinos, and also um, their conservation because they are part of our identity and our culture. Formulation of common food and safety standards so that, again, it will ensure uh, that food being produced, food that uh, is being consumed by the people are safe. Um, there are also other existing programs supported by the Philippine government through the DOST. Some of these projects are the following. So number one, or the first one, providing funds for basic research related to science and technology, because again, research is very important. Providing scholarships for undergraduate, so scholarships for undergraduate and graduate studies of students in the field of science and technology, because uh, there are a lot of students, a lot of people um, who are, uh, deserving to study. So even if they have like financial problems, so uh, the DOST will help those students to finish a certain degree through the scholarships that they are offering. Establishing more branches of Philippine science high school system. So what we call as the PSI or the PhilSci. So this is uh, a school for uh, those um, talented and bright students who are inclined in science and mathematics. Creating a science and technology parks, Balik Scientist Program, and establishment of the National Science Complex. So now we have famous Filipino in the field of science. First one, we have uh, Mr. Ramon Cabanos Barba. So uh, he has an outstanding research on tissue culture in the Philippine mango. So uh, his research um, dealt with um, producing uh, or propagating more flowers 
in the mango and eventually if there are more flowers of course more fruits will be produced and harvested so this is an image here of mr labanos barb next one is we have josefino cacas pumiso he works on observing characteristics of antarctica by using satellite images so um, if you don't know, uh, around the world, there are a lot of satellites. So Mr. Kumiso, without going to Antarctica, so he used satellite images. So he studied those images so that he will be able to um, observe characteristics of Antarctica. So this is Mr. Josefino Kumiso. Next, we have uh, Mr. Jose Bejar Cruz Jr. He is known internationally in the field of electrical engineering and was elected as officer of the famous Institute, Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineering. So it's very nice to know that uh, Filipino, Filipinos excel in science and technology, even in the international field. So this is Mr. Jose Bejar Cruz Jr. Next we have um, Lourdes Hansoy Cruz. So she is notable for her research on sea snail venom. So based on what I have read, uh, the venom of the sea snail is used as a pain relie reliever or a pain killer. So we have here uh, an image of Lourdes Hansoy Cruz. Next, we have Fabian Milliard Dairit. His research on herbal medicine. So uh, Mr. Dairit um, wants to have uh, natural remedies for different sickness or illness. So that's why he focused on herbal medicine. Next, we have Rafael Dineros Guerrero III, his research on tilapia culture. So uh, again, based on my readings, uh, his study was about on uh, reversal, sex reversal uh, in tilapia, uh, which later on helped or yielded in uh, production of more tilapia, meaning if uh, more tilapia will be produced, uh, there will be more sales in um, uh, tilapia. So this one, this is Mr. Rafael Dineros Guerrero. Next we have uh, Enrique Mapua Austria Jr. So he is known for inventing the meconium drugs testing. So Dr. Austria developed uh, a type of drug testing known as meconium drugs testing, which can uh, detect substances of drugs in newborn um, by examining their stool. Next, we have uh, Lilian Formalejo Patenia. She is uh, famous for doing research on plants biotechnology. So she discovered um, a new breed of calamansi and uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, calamansi and pomelo. So she is more on um, research on plants and um, fruit producing plants. Next we have Marijo Panganiban Ruiz. She is known for being an outstanding educator and graph theorist. So uh, she is also um, a mathematician here in the Philippines. Next, we have Gregory Ligot Tangunan. He is known for his research in the field of communications technology. So Mr. Tangunan um, discovered or developed analog antenna, um, which uh, makes our communication faster through fiber optic technology. So uh, there are other outstanding Filipino scientists who are recognized here and abroad for their outstanding contribution in science. 
first one is uh, Cesar A. Saloma. He is an internationally re renowned physicist and he is also uh, a chancellor in the University of the Philippines. Next, we have Edgardo Gomez. He is a famous scientist in marine science. So he studied uh, the destruction or damage in the coral reefs. And uh, his project was to um, replant or plant corals so that um, that will serve as homes for uh, the fish in the sea. Next, we have William Padolina. He is uh, known in the field of chemistry and president of NAST Philippines. So NAST is the National Academy for Science and Technology. Lastly, we have Angel Alcala. He is um, known in the world of marine science. So uh, Mr. Alcala um, is very much interested in researching our waters, so marine, um, the marine world. So that is his focus. So uh, factors that influence the development of Filipino scientists. So um, first we start with individual interests in science. So these people, the people that we have, or I have discussed earlier, um, perhaps at a young age or when they were schooling, um, they had an interest in science. It can also be that their family is inclined in science and um, their family influenced them um, to have a love for science. Also, the natural environment, um, the place where that certain person lives in, maybe he or she was interested about things that he or she saw in the environment. So um, other factors, so the teachers, so school science, the teachers and the learning environment can also influence um, a love for science. So next we have uh, lab science laboratories. So real life context. So maybe um, they were in school, they love to do experiments, they love to do research. So that influenced those people to become Filipino scientists. So who knows in the future, um, if you have uh, an interest in science, maybe um, you can do research. And in the future, maybe um, one of you will be well known in the field of science and technology. So um, that's it for my discussion. That's the end of the slide. If you have questions, clarifications, any violent reactions, feel free to comment uh, your questions on the comment section below. Thank you so much, you guys. You take care always. Bye-bye for now.